Well, Ramblers, this week I am keeping my promise from the previous week of giving you my list of the top uh, three worst films of the summer. So uh, without further ado, let's get rambling. Brandon, you're getting lazy on us. Why just three? I'm not. I'm not actually getting lazy on you guys. I I tend to not go see bad movies. I can kind of see what films are kind of gonna go uh, south, and uh, I tend not to see them. So I only really saw three films um, that uh, were pretty bad. Well, not bad. I'll, I'll, I'll explain later. I'll explain it later. Because um, one of them's going to be a little iffy, and the other one's going to be very obvious as to why it was that bad. So, uh, let's get on with the list. Number three. Um, bear with me. Let me explain this one. Elysium. Now, it wasn't a horrible film. It wasn't a horrible film. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of Neil Blomkamp's work, and I love that he, in fact, loves um, video games as well. Uh, he's a big fan of Halo, as you could see by Elysium. It takes a lot of the imagery from uh, Halo, and even I'd say Mass Effect, the uh, Citadel from Mass Effect, um, which is the ring Elysium in this. But the, the, the film, with no doubtedly, had some amazing, uh, I, it's gonna sound, sound shallow, um, amazing fight sequences. Awesome fight sequences, awesome sound design, and awesome weapon design. I don't know how he does it. It's really great, and I will say kind of video gamey, but like not in a bad way. Kind of funny. I, I love video games, but saying video gamey is a bad connotation when it comes to film, I guess. Um, but there are some things that in the film that really didn't work. Um, uh, Neil Blomkamp is a very political person, and not that I. On, on, I'm not going to say which side of the debate I'm on, the film was obviously about um, immigration. And um, while I thought District 9 handled it in a better way, the, um, the underlying political tone of it, this one kind of um, had to punch you in the face with it. Which I don't think it's... <clears throat> I think it was Neil Blomkamp trying to make a film that was more for general audiences. Which general audiences need to have something like this shoved down their throat. Which... It's gotten some praise here and there. Um, I thought there were things that could be it could it could have been done more subtly, and especially with the love story in the in the movie, they had to show. Um, there's a sequence in the film that it shows why oh they love each other because it's childhood thing. And they keep showing that childhood thing every couple. I could count at least seven times they showed the childhood event that happened, and it's like okay movie you don't have to spell everything out. We're not dumb. But he had, I guess this was, I'm, I'm just assuming this is Neil Blomkamp's first run at giving a film for more, uh, trying to get more people in seats. Because I own, uh, apparently District 9 didn't do that, even, despite the fact it being a perfectly well-made film. Uh, so, it's at number three for a reason as why it was disappointing. I was disappointed with it. Um, in some aspects. Other aspects, fantastic filmmaking. Number two... Uh, I wanted I wanted this to be good. Um, uh, the Great Gatsby. Pretty bad. It was pretty awful. Um, like there was a lot of problems with the editing. I had a lot of problems with the editing. The, in the first at least ten minutes of the film, I counted. I started counting seconds as to which how long each shot held. The cuts would go crazy. It's like the editor was on crack, and he has also ADD, and has the attention span of a ferret. And he thinks other people have the attention spins of ferrets, so he must keep cutting to different things at every single moment. No subtlety in, there is no subtlety in the pacing of, of a shot, how a shot should be held out to, you know, draw on the character's acting. Um, also, with the character's acting, the, the, uh, the actor's acting, um, it kind of was mixed, it was mixed, it was very mixed, uh, mixed bucket, if that's a term, but just... Came up with, I guess, I don't know. Some parts were pretty laughable. Um, when Tobey Maguire, Tobey Maguire screams, I started laughing to myself. Um, and the, I forget his name, the actor who was in Warrior with uh, opposite Tom Hardy. Um, his accent started getting ridiculous at some points in the film. And also the soundtrack was very, eh, iffy. I'm not a fan of Jay-Z. Okay, I'm a fan, I have one of his songs. I have one Jay-Z song reminder. Um, but... Mixing it with, like, I saw the kind of what they were trying to do, but it didn't really work. Like, uh, with, with uh, A Knight's Tale, granted, that's not a, it's a, it's an okay film. It's not a glorious piece of cinema, and it's not trying to rewrite, it's not trying to, uh, incorporate, make one of the, one of the world's greatest books ever written, The Great Gatsby, which I love, I love that book. It was 
one of the few books in high school that we had to read that I adored the hell out of. Um, but when you're making a film like this, you have to kind of, not like, um, uh, it's kind of hard to say because like, I, it, in the hands of a better director, it would have worked better. This one, not so much. So, number two of the worst films of the summer, The Great Gatsby. Sorry, Leo. I know you're trying. Okay, you remember how I said I saw all of these films on this list? Kind of a lie. A little bit of a lie. Um, number one is Grown Ups 2. Adam Sandler in these last couple of years has been making horrible, horrible films. And, uh... <clears throat> There's a, there was a thing I heard on, Reddit letter, uh, on a website called Red Letter Media of them talking about how he's um, not really. This is that. This is just their opinion. It's not actually true. How Adam Sandler is kind of a con man and how he's um, pooling all this money together, getting the studios to add as much product placement as possible to get as much money as he can out of this movie that they can shoot in a weekend, which honestly is a weekend of just them doing things. No, nothing is at stake. There is no actual plot. To it just stuff happens. Each scene is a lead up to a joke, which is usually what a YouTube video is. There's a YouTube a YouTube videos are like a little, little short, short. Sometimes they can be little short things of small pieces of brilliance. Grown Ups 2 is not that. Um, I've actually compiled a list. I haven't seen the film, mind you, but I can guarantee you everything I'm listing right here is probably in the film. <clears throat> Let's begin, shall we? Horse product placement. Uh, sports figure cameo for the sake of appealing to sports fans. Uh, people falling down. Peer poo poo jokes or gags. I know there's a pee joke because I saw that trailer. The oh dear peas on Adam Sandler's face. Joke. Kevin James is fat. That's the joke. Making making fun of others for being different, i.e. Um, deaf people of different ethnicities and people who have uh, physical defects. And don't say that doesn't happen, because remember Crazy Eyes? Even though it was a more subtle way of doing it, Crazy Eyes in, uh, I think it was uh, Mr. Deeds, is a form of that. But Adam Sandler has just gotten more, la gotten more lazy with it, and just deliberately just making fun of people for being different. Homophobia. That's also another thing. Um, purely sexist and misogynistic acts of among the men. Adam Sandler makes a funny noise. Animal abuse. No conflict in the plot. Plot with quotations on it. Listen to this. The budget for <laughs> Grown Ups 2, $80 million. Do you want to know the, 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 the budget for a much better film, <clears throat> and it was actually my number one for best films of the summer, The World's End, which is a science fiction uh, com comedy that has so many layers of awesome in it. Um, $20 million for that film. Uh, yeah. 80 million for a film in which nothing happens, 20 million dollars for a film in which brilliance and character development and actual story and plot and structure and build up for the jokes and payoff for the jokes happen. And yet Grown Ups 2 is, had made more in the box office than The World's End, which is sitting at two, uh, 20 mil, 22 million in the box office as of now. Which makes me really sad, because Edgar Wright is an amazing man. Adam Sandler is a simpleton. This turned into a whole thing of me talk, doing a countdown, now I'm just trashing on Adam Sandler. Anyway, that was my list of the top three worst films of the summer. Um, honorable mentions, Smurfs 2, I didn't see that. I know it was pretty, probably pretty awful. Planes. Uh, if Tyler Perry did anything this summer, then yeah, put that in the list as well. If you liked this video and you'd like to see more, hit the subscribe button to subscribe to Renegade Cinema to get a vid videos like this every Saturday for your entertainment. And also hit up the Renegade Cinema website to get content written all just for you. The people. And as always, I'm Brandon Gropey with Renegade Cinema, signing off.